Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson 14, selecting a sample. Okay, so the classwork says, as you learned in lesson 13, sampling is a central concept in statistics. Examining every element in a population that is usually impossible. So, research and articles in the media typically refer to a sample from a population. In this lesson, you'll begin to think about how to choose your samples. In exercise one through and two, we're going to talk about what is random. In number one, it says, write down a sequence of heads, tails, you think would typically occur if you tossed a coin 20 times. Compare your sequence to the ones written by some of your classmates. How are they alike and how are they different? So if I were to just choose randomly, just out of the, off the top of my head, I'd say tails, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, heads, tails, heads, tails. And that's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So I just made these up as I went, whatever I felt like writing down. And there is my sample. Okay, randomly, tails and heads. I just drew this line here to separate the ten, so I made sure I had twenty of them. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I had eleven out of twenty that were tails. So therefore, I must have had nine out of twenty that were heads. So it's really close to fifty percent. <clears throat> All right, so now it says work with a partner, toss a coin 20 times, and write down the sequence of heads and tails you get to compare the results with your classmates. Instead of flipping the coin, actually I could flip the coin, this one. Okay, so I just opened up my TI-84 calculator, and usually under the apps there is what is called a probability simulator. I do not have that app installed on this version, so I'm just going to do random integer. The, the app would actually show a coin flipping on the screen. I'll just do random integers, one and two, where one is heads and two is tails. I need to do that 20 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I need to write these down or I'll lose track. So it was heads. So there's what? Four heads, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I show them from the start over. I lost track. So again, I'm going to go to math, arrow over to probability. I'm looking for random. So right here, and I do one, comma, two to tell it the two numbers I want. And there's a one, two, three, four, five. Let's do five at a time. So that's three heads, two tails. So there's five, okay? One, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Two, three ones, and a two, which is tails. Three heads, and a tail. And I'm gonna continue this, so let's do five more. One, two, three, four, five. They were all tails. Okay, and five more. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So it was tails, tails, heads, heads, tails. And there was the outcome using my calculator. So I got three, four, five, six, seven heads. Seven out of 20. Therefore, I must have had 13 out of 20 tails. Okay. Something here happened that was really interesting. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tails in a row. That was a random generator, true random. The calculator has already had random values put into it. Um, whereas when I was doing it, you're always thinking about the possible outcomes. You're like, well, there's no way I'm going to get that many in a row. I better switch. So really, if you're just making it up as you go, but this exercise was to show that randomness isn't as random as you think it is. Okay, or it's more less yeah it's less random okay tails tails heads tails 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 i never had more than three in a row because in your mind you're thinking well there's got to be a tail coming up next since three heads came up but in this case we actually had 
nine in a row. And I probably would never do nine in a row if I were writing it myself. So that's where it says, how are your results from you actually tossing a coin different the sequence of your classmates wrote down. Okay. So obviously you're going to be more varied and your values may be further from the actual theoretical probability if you do it, actually conduct the experiment and toss a coin. Part C says, Tony claimed she could make up a set of numbers so that would be random. What do you say to her? In that case, you might say, well, how random would it be? You're still thinking about the numbers and you can't just randomly pick them. The only way you could do it is if you put numbers in a bag and through them. You aren't actually deciding which number to say. You're drawing out and reading. In exercise 3 through 11, the length of words in the poem, Casey at the bat. Suppose you wanted to learn about the lengths of the words in the poem, Casey at the bat. You plan to select a sample of eight words from the poem and use these words to answer the statistical question. On average, how long is a word in the poem? What is the population of interest here? Okay, so then they say, that what's the population of interest? What are we choosing from? And that is the words in the poem. Okay. Or says, look at the poem, Casey at the Bat by Ernest Thayer, and select eight words you think are representative of words in the poem. Record the number of letters in each word you selected. Find the mean number of letters in the word you chose. Okay, so I went online to a website, and I will give them credit here, www.poets.org, and they have Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer, and here it is. It is quite a lengthy poem. So if I just randomly chose words from here, okay, how about I chose springs? I'll write that down. Okay, springs. Okay, and then I go back to the poem, and if I just quickly drop my marker or pen somewhere about here, stricken. Okay, so when I come back here, and I'm going to write stricken. Okay, we're going to select eight of these words, that's two. So if I go back, and how about hugging? Here's one, hugging. So I come back here, and I write hugging. There's three. I'm going to continue this until I have eight. And I'm scrolling. There's one watching. I just scrolled and then I just grabbed something at random. So to speak. But is it really random? That's what we're talking about. Okay, so then if I pick one, there's one. Coal. I'll use the word coal. All right, coal. Set uh, five. Three more times. And sneer, there's a word, sneer, S-N-E-E-R, back to the poem, and how about favored, F-A-V-O-U-R-E, F-A-V-O-U-R-E, favor, and one more time. So I'm just going to go like this, go like this, move my mouse around, let it randomly stop, and where does it stop? Word two. All right. T. Okay, so there. I randomly selected eight words from Casey at the Bat Fighter. Find the mean number of letters in the words you chose. So mean means the average, so I have to count each one. This has seven. Stricken is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hugging is seven. Watching is eight. Bold is four. Sheer is five. Favored with a U is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And two is two. So seven plus eight is 15, and eight is 15, which is 30. I'm sorry, seven, eight is 15, and seven, and eight is 15 again. So this total is 30. Nine and eight is 17, plus two is 19. So 30 plus 19 is 49. 
divided by 8. 6 times 8 is 48. Wow. Let's try that again. 48. 30, 9, 41, 49. 6 times 8 is 48. Subtract, get 10. 6 goes into 10 once. 6, remainder 4. 6 times 6 is 36. And we continue now. So it's 8.166 repeating. The 6 just keeps repeating. Okay. There is the mean number of letters that I chose. 5 says a random sample is a sample in which every possible sample of the same size has an equal chance of being chosen. Do you think the set of words you wrote down was random? I'm going to say no because... We may be attracted to a certain, uh, how can I word this, um, we may be attracted to a certain word that we're looking for, like we might not want to choose small words like this, and, to, and if you notice the only way I got this was by moving my mouse all over randomly and then where I quit, that's where my pen was. That's how I randomly chose. But I, I'm looking at a group of numbers to randomly choose it. I think our eyes tend to just go towards something of a certain characteristic that we are more comfortable with. We just do it subconsciously. And I'll just say that. Okay, number six, working with a partner, follow your teacher's instructions for randomly choosing eight words beginning with the title of the poem and count a hyphenated word as a. Record the eight words you randomly selected and find the mean number of letters in those words. Okay, so that's just doing the same thing I just did. I'm going to skip that. B says compare the mean of your random sample to the mean you found in exercise four. Okay, so I guess they do want us to do it again. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to go get my results, and then I'll write them down so I don't take up time on the clock. Okay, so I randomly chose eight words here. The, t this way, the way I did it this time was different. I actually put my cursor or my pen on the my mouse on the bar here and slid this up and down with my eyes closed. Then I stopped and moved over a little bit, and I went like this, and the first word that I had highlighted is the one I used. So wonderment was the first word that I highlighted there in that case. So that's how I got these words. And died has eight letters. Okay, let me try that again. I don't know where that came from. Eight, letters, eight words we chose, I suppose. Died had four letters. Seemed is six. Much is four. He, two. Sphere, six. Storm dash waves, it said. Hyphenated word as one word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten letters. Thousands is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And wiped is five. Find the mean. Four plus six is ten, plus four is fourteen. Sixteen, twenty-two, thirty-two, forty-one. 46. So that is the total number divided by how many there are. And 5 times 8 is 40. And I get 7 times 8 is 56. Okay, so it's 5 point 5 point 7 5 is my average, my mean. Okay? So the word mean means average. Add them up, divide by how many you have. So my average is 5.75 this time. The last time it was 8.166. So as you can see, I chose smaller numbers randomly this time. So that's how, and I explained how I found the mean for each sample. Okay, add up all of the totals and divide by the number of words. So number seven says, as a class, compare the means from ex exercise four and the means from exercise six. I will provide a chart to compare the means. Record your means from exercise four and your means from exercise six on the chart. Okay.
So what they're saying is I'm going to put, so this doesn't matter. We're just listing a bunch of means. So I'm just going to list some kind of mean from number four and mean from number six. Mean from number four, we already have still here, is 8.2. Just round to one decimal place, and the mean for number six was 5.8. So 8.2, 5.8. I'll just give you a couple more. We'll just um, make some up here that we will use for the next exercises since we don't have a class in the video. And I'm just making up some numbers here, and let's see how about four there. So now it says, as with this list, do you think the means from exercise four or the means from exercise six are more representative of the mean from all the words in the poem and explain your choice? So if we looked at the poem, okay, and I'm looking here and I see quite a bit of words that are like six, seven long, okay? There's some longer ones too, Madden, thousands, echo, answer. But if I just peruse this really quickly, I'm probably going to say that there's the average is probably around six. I don't know. I'm just estimating as we say. So I'm not going to write this, but what I could say is the means and the random sample seem to be similar. As a result, I think the means and the random sample are more representative of the words. In the okay. So anything that's more similar. This was eight. This was four. So... I would choose from exercise 6 because 5.8, 4.5, and 4.1 are all pretty close to 4.5, our middle number here, where these are a lot more drastic differences. 4.9, is a big difference. Okay. Number 9, the actual mean of the words in the poem is 4.2 letters. Based on the fact that the population mean is 4.2 letters, are the means from exercise 4 or the means from exercise 6 a better representation? Okay, so this is 8. That's quite a ways from 4.2. This is over. This is over. And this one was under by one tenth. This was over by 3, and this was over by a little bit more. So I would say definitely the means from 6 were closer. Now 10 says, how did the population mean 4.2 letters compare to the mean of your random sample from exercise 6 to the mean in your exercise 4? Okay. How did this compare to exercise 6 and the mean in exercise 4. Exercise 6 mean mine was here and here. So when I look at the poem and pick random words, I was picking larger words than the average, way larger, and the mean from the 6 was closer, but still high. 11 says, summarize how you would estimate the mean number of letters in the words of another poem based on what you would learn in the above exercise. Okay, so here's what a summarized sample response should look like. Summarize how you would estimate the mean number of letters in the words of another poem based on what you there in the above exercises, then you should say something like this. Students should summarize a process similar to what they did in the lesson. They may simply indicate that they would number each word in a poem. They will make slips of paper from one to the number of words in the poem and place the slips of paper in a bag or jar. Select a sample of eight or more slips of paper Students would then record the number of letters in the words identified by the slips of paper. As in the exercises, the mean of the sample would be used to estimate the mean of all the words in the poem. So you'd be randomly choosing a number that's related to a word in the poem and randomly selecting those words. And that is the end of lesson 14. Go to your problems.